It turns out that I did not do a team builder before this actual battle. And that's on me. I completely forgot because I think we played this at like 1.30 in the morning. Because D-Ray's on the incorrect time zone. He lives in California. So, yeah. Uh, I honestly think I fell asleep waiting for... Like, I took a little nap. And then I woke up and then I was late and just... Yeah, so I forgot to do a team builder before this. I apologize. So, quick one here before the actual battle. Uh, I'm going to let y'all know right now, real quick, that this match is going to be post-commentated. It's just because I accidentally messed up and muted my mic after the first, like, two turns of the actual battle itself. So, yeah, it's going to be post comp Apologize. We'll be back on live on Thursday for week four. This is going up late, too. Just life. Just I really don't want to go into details about it, but just stuff happened sorry this is up late hopefully we'll get it up saturday but if you guys do enjoy this you know what to do let's make sure to draco meteor that youtube algorithm guys 30 likes is the goal thank you all so much for the great support in our first two weeks of the season here and answer the common question of the day so we are taking on grandmaster d-ray the homeboy the buddy grandmaster d-ray channel looking stuff will be down below check him out he is the coach of the los angeles gorilla tactics awesome awesome dude very very nice person as well and yeah you guys can jump into the battle if you want or you can stick around here for the quick team builder so looking at matchup here d-ray ended up making some trades right before our matchup much like kelly did uh which was a little bit annoying but it is what it is so he ended up getting uh quagsire out cream and Zorark, all three of which are kind of annoying just because his previous three months had worse matchups in these three months. So yeah, that's gonna be a little bit annoying going into this game. Uh, regardless though, Necrozma, giant, giant problem. He's brought set up the first two weeks. That's gonna be very annoying because I definitely expect it to be set up this time around. The Galar Zapdos and Raikou are both very terrifying offensively. Uh, Galar Zapdos hits extremely hard. I don't know if it's gonna be choice or just like boots maybe, uh, offensive in general. Uh, Raikou could also be a little bit problematic because Calm Mind Raikou actually kind of just destroys me. He could be Calm Mind 3 attacks or he could be Sub Calm Mind, uh, which would be equally just as annoying. Nido Queen, I definitely think, is going to be coming to this game because it's able to blanket check a good majority of our squad. I'd be really surprised if he didn't bring that. And uh, Scizor, Zorark, Quagsire. I think those three are the last Mons that could come to this game. Uh, Zoroark offensively is very, very annoying depending on what item uh, it's exactly running or what set it's running in general. Scizor, I think, has to come regardless just because it can be a very scary late game sweeper and it gains the momentum and uh, could just be annoying regardless. Although if he doesn't bring it, that'd be really nice. And Quagsire only makes sense because if he doesn't bring like a fat Nidoqueen, then he's gonna need a fat Quagsire to deal with our Cinderace uh, because Nidoqueen does help him deal with Cinderace more or less if it is really, really bulky. And as for Cryogonal, uh, actually, well, Cryogonal could be a little bit annoying. Just because Freeze Dry hits the entirety of our draft. Our Creamy, I don't think, comes because we have Celesteela, we have Cinderace, and we have Roserade, all three of which uh, can deal with it accordingly. Uh, Greedent and Shuckle are not Pokemon, so yeah, we're not going to worry about them. But yeah, here we have uh, Latios, Rock and Roost, three attacks. Offensively, this thing is actually really, really amazing, especially if he doesn't bring the Al Creamy, because then I get to just click Draco Meteor for free. And Nuke absolutely everything. If he brings Quagsire, it more than likely might be unaware. So then that means I can just uh, destroy it with two Draco Meteors back to back, which would be awesome. Psyshock is really only there for the cryogonal because otherwise my other two attacks are doing nothing to it next off we have eternal the celesteela this time we're running a very fat offensive celesteela we have enough speed to outspeed everything on his team that is not going to be scarfed uh basically his only real scarfers could be like zorark or the zapdos so if those two aren't scarfed then I autonomize, outspeed everything, and if I get my weakness policy boost and then get another special attack boost on top of that, this thing is going to be steamrolling through D Ray's team. Earthquake is only really there for the Raikou. Flamethrower, Air Slash on the special side, hit basically everything for good or super effective damage, neutral, super effective damage. Uh, next off, we have Cinderace, aka Sanji here. I, I remember debating on what exactly I wanted to run on Cinderace here. I figured that after Powerball and U-Turn, I can just really have whatever in the last two slots. So I just threw on Taunt there uh, to stop Necrozma from potentially setting up and Gunk Shot on the off chance that he does bring Al Creamy. 
then I can just smack that with the gunk shot, which would be really, really nice. So we have enough speed for the Rika, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have some bulk invested there so we can always tank plus two, possibly plus four uh, bullet punch from Scizor, depending on how offensive of a Scizor it's really going to be. And then 180 from 252 didn't change too many important roles. I think we're only doing like two or three percent less damage, which uh, didn't really help out with any like Okos or Tua KOs or anything like that. So next off we have Hard Body aka Regirock. I really was not sure if I wanted to bring Regirock or not, but I remembered a cool set that my boy Shuckle brought when he faced uh, Galar Zapdos and that was Choppleberry Explosion. So I was like, hey, I could probably run that and it actually really helps me against Zapdos because offensively Zapdos is very, very problematic to deal with. And then I just had to find whatever last two moves to put on there, which were Fire Punch and Earthquake. Choppleberry helps us tank close combat or Thunderous Kick and then from there we can hope for the Explosion and knock it out with us, which is amazing because Regirock's Fizz Def is so ridiculously high. Next up, we have Poison Ivy, aka Roserade. I think I originally had something else over this. I don't remember, but I know I replaced it with Roserade here because I realized that I'm not going to have a good way of potentially trying to pivot into something like the Raikou or the Needle Queen, or even the Zoroark. And while, yes, they're still hitting me decently hard with me being such a bulky variant of Roserade, I can hopefully tank two hits, and then from there just do some damage back. And I know, I know you see the Petal Blizzard uh, with the attack investment. This was just because I was so, so terrified of Sub Calm Mind Raikou. Even if it's like max HP, I'm like 99% sure Petal Blizzard still breaks its defense. Yeah, and this is not, um, am I thinking of something else? I'm thinking of, uh, like a, it's not a two to three hit, three to two turn move. I'm thinking of something else, but P Petal Blizzard, I'm pretty sure he's not going to expect. So if he thinks that he can bring in Raikou on my Roserade and Calm Mine, or if he thinks that I can't break a sub after he Calm Mines, then he's going to be very, very, uh, surprised, I'm sure. And then Extra Sentry is there to hit the... Nido Queen and hit the Galar Zapdos on the off chance that he feels like being risky and switching in uh, one of those two in against me. Spikes are there because spikes are just really good. His removal is kind of bad. And then Stun Spore is just there so we can maybe paralyze things. And then our final team member here is the one Mon I'm hoping puts in work and that is Fabulous the Obstagoon. I really had no idea what other offensive Mon to have potentially brought to this match. And then I started to look at D-Ray's team and I noticed, hey, Shuckle is not a Pokemon. If Scizor is gone, then this just kind of comes in and I smack everything really hard with a Reckless Stab Double Edge. So if I can get rid of Scizor, then I just bring this in, get KOs, and things just start dropping. Fire Punch is nice in case I do have to get rid of Scizor with this, or if I catch it on a switch in potentially. A Parting Shot there is good for momentum, and then Knock Off, of course, is Knock Off, being able to get rid of items, and just a secondary stab move in general. So, yeah, that is going to be our squad, guys. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. All right, uh, it's been a while since I've done a post-com. Uh, long story short, I did not record the audio for the last, like, 90% of this actual battle, which really sucks because I didn't realize I had muted my mic uh, during the actual battle itself, and then I went to rewatch the video and there was no audio. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of annoying. So, I'm gonna do a post com for this week's EWT match, though. Don't worry, we will be back to live com um, next week in week four. Also, apologize that this is going up so late. Just had some personal life stuff go on. I just got back home the other day and just, yeah, hopefully, this will be up on Saturday. But of course, Hey, boss of YouTube, AK, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to week three of EWT season three. We are taking on a new face known as, well, new face for us. We are taking on Grandmaster D Ray. His channel link and stuff will be down below. Definitely check out D Ray. He's an awesome, awesome dude and has some fun content. So I did go over what we brought here in our matchup. Of course, if you guys are excited for this game, and for those of you who might have, who might have been on my channel before 7 Gen or by 7 Gen, before 8 Gen basically, yeah, this is like the first post com I'm doing in forever. So hopefully y'all enjoy. And if you do enjoy, let's make sure to Draco Meteor, that YouTube algorithm, 
answer the comment question of the day and let's hit the like goal of 30 likes guys we've been killing it the first two weeks thank y'all so much 30 likes of course is the goal for this week's ewt match as we are taking on d-ray as i mentioned so looking at what he brought here he brought everything i expected i honestly did not think that he would bring the out creamy that was the one thing that kind of stuck out to me that was like well why does he have that because we have um cinderace we have celestilla and we have roserade so yeah out creamy definitely did not expect that probably didn't respect it enough in this matchup honestly quagsire also was a little bit odd but everything else made sense in my opinion to have potentially been brought to this game looking at leads though i figured regirock was probably my best lead just because if he does lead off with the galler zapdos then i can tank a hit potentially and maybe go for a hit against it back or go for my own rocks against whatever else he leads with so yeah let's go ahead and jump right into this i will hopefully still have the face cam here at least covering up my old face cam so yeah we can go ahead and get this popping not really sure what he wants to lead with i figured that maybe he would lead off with the scissor or the galar zapdos even if he let off with scissor we had fire punch on our regirock so i figured that was good enough but he actually ends up leading off with the raiko which makes sense because we don't have a ground type and we don't have our lantern so i'm thinking well worst case here he probably just goes for the volt switch if he has aura sphere that would be a little bit annoying but he could be a potential calm mind variant of raiko or he could be like a salt vest maybe even so i figured just going for my rocks was the best play i could have done here just to scout out to see what he wanted to do as he hards right into the quagsire i have a pretty good switch into this in my roserade so i'm gonna go hard right into that and see what he wants to go for whether it be the scald or the earthquake as he does go for the scald thankfully uh i last minute changed poison point to natural cure so even if you got a burn here that wouldn't have been entirely too bad but i figured that his best switch into my roserade is most likely the scissor i don't think he's going to want to risk switching in something like galar zapdos or necrozma on the off chance that i do sludge bomb and scissor basically can hard wall any variant of uh, roserade more or less so i decided to go for sun spore as i do catch the incoming scissor in hindsight maybe i could have gone for lyra spikes but paralyzing this in the moment i thought was going to be good because if he gets paralyzed later then that's a benefit for me so now i'm trying to figure out well what do i want to switch into scissor i guess i'm gonna bring in my cinderace so there's maybe a chance he doesn't have something like knockoff and that he might just go for like defog or u-turn as he does go for the u-turn turns out he's running a lot a lot of attack investment on the scissor which really caught me off guard too because this cinderace has a little bit of bulk as he decides to bring back in the quagsire i don't go for the u-turn here because i'm thinking maybe he's got rocky helmet he didn't have leftovers i guess he could be rindo berry so possibly maybe for like giga drain telesteela i suppose uh but there's a chance that he could have the rocky helmet for my cinderace so that's why i hard switch right into roserade as opposed to going for the u-turn as he goes for the earthquake doing a nice little bit of damage to me not enough to where i'm entirely too concerned about this quagsire and me constantly having to switch right back into it so i can take this chance go ahead and get up my first layer of spikes which is amazing because now i have rocks up and i have spikes up obviously this is kind of a problem <laughs> if he has defog so i'm hoping if he does have the defog maybe he'll get paralyzed or on the off chance that he doesn't have defog he won't go for it here which gives me a free switch into my cinderace as he actually ends up going for the knockoff as i thought he would defog or u-turn so that was a really good play on d race part there as he smacks me uh coming in i'm still out of range of a bullet punch though which is nice although if it's sword dance then that could be a little bit problematic so i gotta be careful with that but with my hazards up scissor is getting really worn down so i powerball the incoming quagsire and i do get it get a little bit lucky here with the burn i'm not sure how much that mattered in the long run because i think either way he would have been forced to recover this turn although i guess it does kind of make quagsire a little bit more useless because upon taking entry hazard damage is going to be taking that extra six percent from burn now so expecting him to recover i hard switch into my latios which with me having hazards up and scissor already being so low i have free liberty to kind of go for whatever here and i decide to be really aggressive by going for the draco meteor just because even if he did want to bring in the alchemy it's going to take 24 percent because of hazards so then from there i can see if it has leftovers or not potentially and then switch out or do whatever move accordingly but he actually decides to leave in his quagsire and it just drops i think this always knocked it out if it was physically defensive and if it was Pedef, it did live but then i'm not sure what he would have done back to me maybe gone for like toxic i guess if he had ice beam or maybe he would have had ice punch thinking he wouldn't get burned so i, I don't know i guess that would have made sense 
But uh, now it comes to Necrozma, and I'm at minus two, so I'm thinking, okay, this is probably going to try and set up. He's brought set up Necrozma uh, the first two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. So I contemplated on what exactly I wanted to bring in. I didn't know if, whether to bring in my Obstagoon or my Celesteela. So ultimately, I brought in my Regirock on the off chance that if he does set up, I can go for an explosion and absolutely just nuke him and hopefully weaken him to the point where I can then revenge kill him with something. But, turns out that he's got Stealth Rocks. I was not expecting him to be a fat Stealth Rock Necrozma, which is a giant relief off of my shoulders, honestly, in this particular moment of the game. Because now I can Fire Punch thinking, okay, he's going to sack off the, what's it called, Scizor, and probably try to bring in Galar Zapdos, and we can go from there, but no, he stays in, which means I'm mispredicted here, as Fire Punch does a decent little bit of damage, not too much, but I can definitely tank another Photon Geyser, so expecting him to just try and pick me off at this point, I'm thinking I can go for the explosion, either knock him out in return, or put him low enough to the point where when it comes back into hazards, it's gonna get KO'd, or he's just gonna leave it in for death fodder, but he makes a really smart play here, brings in the scissor, which was actually kind of risky, because if I did fire punch again, I'm pretty sure I would have 2 a KO'd him at that point, I don't think I would have knocked him out if he... If he was Akaberry. No, if he was Akaberry, it would have been a 2 a KO. But if he wasn't Akaberry, then I'm pretty sure I would have knocked him out after the entry hazard damage. So yeah, really risky play on his part there. But it works out as it's still sticking around. But from my HP bar, it looks like it's right at 25%. So there's a chance that he's not going to want to save it anymore. Which means I can bring in my Celesteela, go for Flamethrower, get my plus one in my special attack. And unless that Raikou is choice specs, which if it was specs, I'm pretty sure he would have gone for Volt Switch earlier in the match. So that means I could more than likely live any one hit from it, and then maybe I'll totemize and go from there. So I figure I'm just going to go ahead and go for the flamethrower. There's not really much merit for me to go for the autotomize, just because he can still go for knockoff and get rid of my weakness policy. So I don't want that to happen. As I hit up the incoming Necrozma, this was actually a really smart play on D-Ray's part, just so he wouldn't give me the uh, special attack boost, because now he can get off damage on my Necrozma, and I make a really, really bad misplay here. I made a bad play. And he ended up missing Heat Wave. What I should have done, what I 100% should have done, was gone for Autotomize. The only thing that that would have... The only real thing I should have been scared of, I should say, was that if he had Thunder Wave. But he had already shown Photon Geyser and Rocks. He should have had some type of recovery in some way of hitting my Celesteela. So, I think I was scared of Autotomize. I mean, of Thunder Wave, which is why I didn't Autotomize. But I should have Autotomized there. Because then I could have got the Heat Wave, lived, got the plus two, outsped this Raikou, knocked it out with Earthquake, and just... Yeah, that really sucks, but it did kind of help me out in the sense that now this Raikou can't knock me out in one hit, so I can go for the Autotomize here, and if he does go for an attack, I live, get my plus two speed, outspeed him, and I could potentially just sweep at this point with Celesteela, but he makes an excellent play there, goes for the Calm Mind first as I Autotomize, I'm able to outspeed him the following turn, hit him up with an Earthquake, and a plus two Earthquake would have just blown this thing backwards if I had gone for Autotomize and been hit by that heat wave. I guess if I did Autotomize, I could have just gone for Earthquake. As he hit me with the heat wave, potentially? I don't know, like that whole sequence just has a lot of different outcomes if you want to theory him on it, honestly. But yeah, uh, in the end, it did work out for me, as I mentioned, because I do get off a good hit on this Raikou. As I bring in my Opsigoon, his only normal resist is now gone. Scizor comes in and gets dropped by hazards. I'm Scarfed, I outspeed this and KO this, or I 2 a KO whatever comes in. So... I'm just going to stay in here, go straight for the double edge, which is stabbed and boosted by Reckless, which is amazing because something is going to get absolutely smacked by Furbulus here as he is now able to find out that we are Scarfed, so we are faster than him. And he makes a hard switch here into his Galar Zapdos, if I'm not mistaken. He did spend a little bit of time trying to figure this out. I think he was trying to see if maybe Alcremie could have lived the hit. Actually, maybe Alcremie could have lived after Hazard. I'm pretty sure it does live after Hazard. Yeah, because that might... Yeah, that happens later. Okay. I don't I don't know. I, I don't know. I could have probably double-checked at this point. But he brings in the Galar Zapdos. And I don't want to really switch out here. I figure that if he's Scarfed, I find out that he's Scarfed. If he's not Scarfed, then I hit him super hard with a Reckless Double Edge. I don't Oko him, but I am doing enough damage to the point where it's not going to be able to switch in after Stealth Rocks, which is great, as he ends up over-predicting goes for the throw chop and we're able to tank this and now i can pick up another ko here with 
Obstagoon, which is amazing. This was a really risky play on my end. I could have definitely switched out instead of just uh, sacking off Obstagoon here, I guess. But I figured that Galar Zapdos is such a scary offensive threat that I need to gain some type of information on it. And there was a chance that, as you saw here, he's going to think I'm going to switch out. So... That ended up working out for me as well as I'm able to knock out the Zapdos. In comes the Scizor, which drops to the Entry Hazards, which means D-Ray's last Pokemon at this point is going to be the Alcremie. And now I remember, because as it comes in, even after the Entry Hazards damage, it is going to be able to tank two of my... Not two of my double edges, sorry. It is going to be able to tank a double edge, but if he had done this earlier, then I think I would have eventually switched out. Obviously, I wouldn't have been at much low HP. But I could have still been aggressive, gone for double edge, or I could have switched out against it and then gone from there. So maybe it wasn't too bad of a play that he didn't bring this in before he brought in Galar Zapdos. Because by him bringing in Galar Zapdos, he could have bluffed that he was scarfed and then tried to force me out, I suppose. And then maybe try to gain momentum from there. So at this point, I'm just trying to double edge this, get it really low. I realized that my Cinderace was sitting at 28% HP. I don't have the boots, which means I still live Stealth Rocks at 44 HP, I'm at 28%, take 25 from the rocks, I come in, hit him up with a Pyro Ball, and it does about 68 to 90%, but my biggest fear at this moment was that I'm going to miss Pyro Ball. So, if anything, I can try and go for Stun Spore here with the Roserade, maybe try and weaken it with my Latios. I don't know, I guess either way, it would have come down to Pyro Ball if my Latios wasn't able to beat this after the Stun Spore. Yeah, I don't know, I guess I should have honestly just brought in Cinderace here. Because he was max defense, max HP, right? He's below, yeah, he's more or less in range of where Blaze Powerball would have knocked him out. And then from there, I could have had an out by bringing in Roserade here and then bringing in Latios. So honestly, I just really misplayed this end of the game now that I'm rewatching it and thinking more about it. Yeah, I was really not paying attention to how much HP the Alcremy was really at because I definitely should have brought in Cinderace before bringing in Roserade and going for Stun Spore and just dragging this out because I remember I remember this in the moment of the battle I I Stun Spore and then I bring in Latios thinking to myself oh hey I'm just gonna spam Psy Shock until he knocks me out so I can put him in range of Pyro Ball when I already had him in range of Pyro Ball earlier so yeah I uh, really damn I really did not like I'm re-watching this and this is really really bad I really messed up this end game here. And then this is where I noticed that D-Ray is running really, really, really low on timer. He's down to about like 50 seconds there, I think you saw, like 40 ish seconds there. And after going for Psy Shock a few times, I realized that, well, I can just start spamming Mystical Fire and I'm eventually going to beat him because of timer. So I decided to take the extremely long route oh, out of this game instead of just bringing in Cinderace, and even if I had missed, I still could have at least taken this route to try and win by timer. So, yeah, this last little bit is just going to be really, really sped up because it's basically all that happens. I do end up beating him eventually. I do get a little lucky with the para hatches, but again, after I put him in the 70-ish percent range or below 70%, which my Psy Shock was doing enough damage to this out creamy at that point, I could have just brought in Cinderace, Pyroballed, and I won. If I didn't win with Powerball, then I win by timer. And yeah, that is basically the battle. I really messed up that endgame now that I'm looking at it, honestly. So regardless, though, we take the Ws. We take the win. We are now 2-1, which is awesome. Heading into week number 4 of the EWT Season 3. I think next week we take on Aquarius in her Chicago String Zaps. So again, apologize, guys, that this was post-commentated. And if it was just really, really rusty on my end, I, I haven't done a post comment forever. But yeah, if y'all did enjoy, let's make sure to Draco Meteor, that YouTube algorithm. Answer the comment question of the day. Of course, guys, the like goal is 30 likes for this week of the EWT. We will be back to our regularly scheduled Thursday uploads of EWT starting this upcoming Thursday. And yeah, with that being said, I'll see you all in a few days, basically. So thank you all for watching. Later, everybody.